Hi there, this is Phil with PhilFX. I've got another tutorial. Uh, today I wanted to create a tutorial. There were some questions that came up in class uh, on specifically working with the channel box. And I thought this was a good opportunity to do a, a quick tutorial on uh, components uh, and uh, objects and the channel box and the attribute editor. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we've got the uh, basic uh, display here where I have a perspective camera and over here on the right at the moment I have a channel box open and the attribute editor open. Uh, these are controlled with these four icons that you see up here. If I unclick all of these you can see that with all of them unclicked we have uh, basically just the perspective camera. Uh, let me go ahead and put us in the mode where I have the outliner here on the right. I always like to see my outliner. If we go over and we click on the furthest most right icon, that will open up the channel box. Now, in the channel box, you don't see anything yet because we haven't created anything, but it will show the most common translation uh, items that you would want to uh, keyframe when you're doing an animation. Those being scale, rotation, and translation, and visibility. Uh, right below the channel box, we have our layer manager. Uh, we have display layers, render layers, and animation layers. Uh, I just recently did another tutorial on how to use the display layers and use those so when you're uh, using uh, texture plane reference maps for doing modeling, there is a way using the display layers so you can uh, uh, edit in wireframe mode, which is something that you definitely want to do when you're doing modeling. Uh, going further, so let's go across these icons here. So we have the channel box up. If we skip this next one and go to the third one here, we click on that. That opens up the attribute editor. And we'll uh, show a little bit of what's in, inside this attribute editor. But these are the main two I want to talk about today. Uh, this fourth one over here, that opens up the modeling toolkit. As you can see, as I've been opening more of these, I have tabs that are going along the right hand side here. So we have our attribute editor, our channel box, our modeling toolkit. And if I click on this last one, which is the second icon in, that opens up the tool settings. At the moment I have the select tool so, uh, open. So these are all the settings for the select tool. So it's getting pretty busy here. So let me close the tool selection and we don't need the modeling toolkit for what we're doing today. So we just have the channel box and the attribute editor. So let's create a shape. So we have a sphere here. And let me open this up, bring this forward, scale this a little bit, and you see this sphere. This object with the channel box selected, you can see I have this object and I have translate X, Y, and Z, rotate X, Y, and Z, and scale X, Y, and Z. I can uh, go in and if I wanted to zero this out, a very common method is I just go in here and I select all three of those, hit number zero, and it puts it puts that value in for all of these. Another way to change these values very quickly is I click on, right here on the name. So you see the name highlighted in blue. And I go out here and I click my middle mouse and I drag. And so you can see me dragging that mouse. And when I drag the mouse, I can change that value. All right. So that's another very fast way of moving things around is you click on here, you click the middle mouse, and you drag, and you can alter those values. Let's go ahead and put zero back in there. Uh, we created this sphere, and had I been in interactive mode, I could have set some parameters. Uh, the, the way I did it initially is I just clicked and dragged. But if I want to modify now these parameters that were used to create this sphere, I can go into what's called the shape node, or the create node rather, and I can change these parameters. So this sphere was created. It has a radius we see a 6.5 and 20 subdivisions on the uh, axis and on the height. So I can go in here and I can change this to 4. Uh, we could make our subdivisions 30. Uh, you don't really see those there, but I can, uh, that modified a little bit, but I can make this 10. You can see those, when I increase this number, you can see that it gets pretty high. Those are the subdivisions going horizontally, or ver yeah, hor no, vertically, excuse me. And then these are the subdivisions going hor horizontally. 
so we can get a lot of resolution on the sphere if we want or I can change this select both of those say put in 15 and bring that down uh, the default uh, as you can see when I initially got it was 20 so let's put it back to the default so this is in object mode all right, so when I'm in object mode, I am editing the entire object. In other words, I'm not modifying one of these faces. I'm not modifying a vertice. I'm not modifying an edge. Okay, those are called components. What I'm modifying is the object. When I am in object mode, I have the ability to go in here and modify the translate node and the translations that are done on that object. You get into component mode. If I wanted to say, let's say, extrude a face, there's a number of different ways. The two main ways of doing that is the way I usually do it is I just put the arrow over the object. I right click and I say, okay, what do I want to modify? Do I want to modify an edge, a vertex, a face? Let's go in here and we'll say we want to modify a face. This is now in component mode. Notice when this is blue and you're in component mode, there's nothing here in the channel box, okay? I can't go in and modify the position. The reason for that is I'm not going to change, I'm not in a mode to modify the position of the object. I'm in a mode to modify the components that make that object. So when you see it blue like this, you don't see any numbers or values here in the channel box. If I right click again, I go back to object mode, I select this, you can see these values come back. So now I can go back in and I can change the translation of the rotation of the scale of this entire object. Uh, another thing Maya calls objects meshes. So this is a mesh. If I go in here and create a sphere or a cylinder, this is a mesh so here's my poly cylinder all right and this is what was these are the parameters used to create that poly cylinder uh, if we go in here and we create a pyramid okay or a cone this is another mesh this is another object so at the moment you can see i have a sphere a cylinder and a cone i have three separate objects each one of these i could go in and i could then uh, edit components in each one of those. Uh, let's say if I wanted to edit some of the components on this cylinder, another way to get into component mode, I show you right clicking, is you go up here to this menu and these two checkboxes here, if I click on this, you notice that went into component mode. So here I can see I can get vertices and I can select vertices because this little icon up here has been selected. If I wanted to grab edges, I can collect, click this icon, and now you can see I can select edges. So I could select this edge, let's say, and I do a translation, I can pull that edge out. Okay. If I s click this icon, now I can grab faces. So I can pull the whole face out. So I can modify the components that make the object. That's why it's called component mode. All right. We right click again, go back to object. Here's the object. And now you can see, I, once again, I have in the channel box the ability to modify these things. Uh, another little thing about meshes, and we'll get into this more uh, as class goes on, but uh, let me make another cylinder here real quick. So I have this cylinder and let me scale him a little bit make him four we'll bring him up take this guy and we'll bring him over so i have a cone in this scene all right we've got a highly modified cylinder and we have these two spheres all right so let me take these two spheres let me select the first sphere shift and select the second sphere and I go up to my mesh menu notice I have polygon selected here I go up to the mesh menu and I say combine okay when I combine those notice both of these became green this is now one object notice I click on this both spheres highlight and I have translations 
that I uh, can do on this object. This mesh just happens to have two spheres, but as far as Maya is concerned, this is one object. Why would you do that? Well, you do that uh, very often. You'll start to create a model for something, and you'll model, uh, let's say, the spokes in a uh, uh, bicycle wheel and then you want to take those spokes and you want to attach them to the rim and you want the rim and the spokes to be one object well first you model a spoke and then you model the rim then you do a combine to put those two things together so now they are considered to be one mesh the other thing is having them in the same mesh i can now go in we go into component mode and I could take this face, for example, and shift select that face. And I go up to Mesh Tools. And I can go in here and I can bridge those two together. So I just connected one face to another. I do that only when both of these objects are within the same mesh. If these were separate objects, in other words, if I clicked on one, if I clicked on the left one, it became green and the right one was deselected, or I clicked on the right one and the left one was deselected, they weren't in the same mesh, I would not be able to do this operation where I combine faces together. I can combine faces together when uh, both of these uh, sub-objects essentially are within the same mesh. They are considered to be the same object. So let's go back into object mode again. I click on this. Let's close this down. You see the uh, translations. Notice what's also going here. All right, now this is, I've talked about this a little bit in class. There is this thing called history. So the history is everything about this object that was used to create it up until this point. So what did I do to create this object? Well, I created one polysphere that had a radius of four. I created a second polysphere that had a radius of four. Uh, I must have actually deleted a uh, component. Oh, uh, when I did a bridge, it actually deleted the faces and then it put a bridge between the two. Uh, notice right here, uh, we have this bridge between the two. Now, because I haven't done what's called deleting history, and deleting history would mean I would go in and I would delete these instructions. Because I haven't deleted history, I can actually go in and modify this. So I can go in and divisions here, let's say, and put in four. Notice what that did. That put in four divisions in this bridge between these two objects. I could go in and make this eight. Uh, now I'll change that again, eight. All right, so we can modify that. Uh, there is a reason why you do want to delete history. I talked a little bit about this in class. As you start to model, uh, if you did extensive modeling on this, this history gets to be quite long. What happens then is every time uh, you open up Maya, it actually executes this history. In other words, it starts with a sphere one and sphere two, and let's say I did 300 edits on top of this. Maya would apply all 300 of those edits to get to the point that we are today. Now I have the advantage that I could go back and I could modify some of these, but I have the disadvantage is it starts to become very long in opening up a file. Uh, there are other things too and other reasons why you do want to delete history, but we won't talk about that at the moment, but I just wanted you to be aware of that. So here's the channel box. We've talked about components. We get, get into component mode by right clicking. I go into edge. I can select edges. I can pull edges out. I can go into vertex. I can grab some vertices. I can pull those out. So I'm modifying the components. I go back into uh, object mode. And now I see the translations and visibility on and off that I can do to this unique object. Uh, so we've covered those. Let's talk a little bit about the attribute editor. Now the attribute editor actually has all of the nodes essentially that are used to construct this entire uh, object that I've made here. You can actually see these, this whole tree here of things that were used to build this. Uh, one thing I want to do right now, let's go in and let's go back to the channel box and I'm going to take this object and we're going to delete history. So the way you delete history is you go to edit, delete by type, and delete history. Now when I do this, watch what happens over here. So we delete the history, boom, 
Now that history is gone, okay? This is now, when Maya opens this up, it opens up this object the way you see it right now. It doesn't, quote, build the object from the history of how I put it together. Uh, if we go back to the attribute editor now, we only have the main components. We have what's called the transform node. This is how things are moved. Uh, we have the shape node. These have to do with the specific shape itself. Uh, we have a shading group that has to do with the texture that's been put on here, how it's attached, and this is in fact the default shader uh, in Maya. The default shader is always a Lambert. Uh, if I went in and let's go ahead and put something different on here, so let's do a favorite material, let's do a blend. Okay, now you can see I've changed that material and we now have the translate transform node, the uh, shape node, and now we have the blend, which is the new material that I put on here. So in the transform node, essentially these numbers that you see here, translate, rotate, scale, and shear, are very similar to what you have here inside the channel box. It's actually more information, more information than what you probably need in terms of doing an animation. Uh, there's things where you can go in and, and uh, you can actually modify the uh, local pivot point as well as the world pivot point in this object. Uh, we haven't talked about those yet, but this gives you the ability to go in and modify those. You can uh, do some things with translation relative to how uh, display handles are displayed. Uh, everything that has to do with essentially moving the object is handled in the transform node. In the shape node, we have everything that has to do with how we build or, or display that shape. So tessellation has to do with how the, uh, we, we uh, tessellate or we do triangles or we do quads on here. Uh, we can go into the render stats. We can buy an object. We can put this object into a scene and we can make everything in the scene cast a shadow except this object. I can go in here and click this off. Now if this scene object was in a scene, this object would not cast a shadow. This one would, this one would, but this one would not. Okay. Uh, likewise, I can uh, have it receive shadows or not. I can have it have motion blur, and you can see so on and so forth. The visibility, smooth shading, visible and reflections, visible and reflection, refractions, uh, double-sided. So the render stats is a very important tab that you find in the attribute editor. Uh, so I think that just about covers what I wanted to cover today. So we've talked about... Uh, Let's review it one more time. In the channel box, when you are in object mode, you will see all of your translation nodes, your rotate and your scale that are used for uh, when you're doing animation or you're moving the object. If you are in component mode, such as edge, when the object is selected, this all disappears. So you don't have these here available to you anymore. In component mode, you can... Uh, go in, like I said, I selected edge here so I can modify an edge. Uh, one of the very common things is you can go in and do multi. Multi is just as the name says. I could go in here and in multi mode I can select a face. I can select an edge. Shift select an edge. So I have a face and an edge selected. Uh, I have multiple edges and then I can go in here and I can move those. So notice it's moving edges and faces at the same time. Uh, actually, that should allow me to do vertices. I'm kind of surprised this. If I go into multi, I should be able to. And it seems to only be selecting. That could be a bug or a feature. I'm using 2015, which hasn't been qualified on Yosemite yet. Uh, that should allow me to do vertices, but it apparently is not. But uh, you get the point. Anyway, that uh, in multi-mode, you can, you can select multiple things at any one time. So hopefully this will help you out, clear a little confusion, and working with the channel box, the attribute editor, and understanding a little bit more about components and objects. Uh, again, this has been Phil with PhilFX. Thanks a lot. Bye.